Welcome back for another episode. We're working on the Red Ram Roadster again. Uh, we're going to work on the steering and the pedals. Uh, right now, I have the steering mocked up to where it was originally from 1924. Uh, we've got a few issues. I'll bring you in closer and we'll go over what we're going to tackle today. So first off, I have the original steering column from 1924 mounted back into the car uh, using the old wooden tow board as a template for now. Uh, the steering wheel I got from a vintage boat and I had it machined at a local machine shop to fit onto the uh, steering, original steering shaft of the 24 Dodge. I had to have the keyway modified as well as the actual uh, board diameter of the wheel. So we got that fitting good. But it's a little bit too far back. So I want to shorten it probably about by two inches. But to do that, we got a few things to deal with before that. I also have the original steering box from the Dodge. I like it. I just have to relocate it uh, for our exhaust that we're going to make with traditional lake pipe style. Uh, the, you can see the exhaust port there. When we put the pipe in, it's going to hit right here. So I'd like to try and get the box down lower and see if that helps us out. Also, uh, I changed out the Pittman arm. This here is from a 1928 Ford Model A and it's attached to the steering linkage from the 31 Plymouth front axle that I put under the car. But you can see it hits just about the leaf spring. Plus it's not on a uh, straight clear shot at it. So what I have to do is heat and reshape and put an offset in the pitman arm so it pulls it out away from the frame. Then after that we'll deal with the clutch and um, brake pedal assembly down in there. So I think we're going to start with the steering box try and get that lowered and see if that improves our clearance issues with the exhaust.
got the steering box relocated about half an inch lower than it was. So I had welded the old original holes, ground them, drilled new holes for our new spot. And I have a piece of exhaust pipe here to replicate the headers. So we got about five eighths of a gap between the steering column and the pipe. So that should be fine. Taking into account any rocking of the engine when it's torquing up. So that takes care of the steering box problem. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier about the steering wheel, I want to at the very least drop it down a little bit, maybe about two inches. Right now it's a little bit in my line of sight. So I want to bring it down and slide it towards the engine a little bit. So to do that, I have to relief the areas on the tow board where it's spot welded to the mounting plate so I can slide this whole tube down through. So I'm going to have to pull this out, do that, and find out where I like it. So this here is the plate I was talking about where this steering column tube goes through this collar and it's uh, riveted or welded into position. So I like to retain this mounting plate so I can reuse it and I'll slide this tube down through and then I'll have to shorten the actual steering shaft also. But I want to make sure I know exactly where I want the wheel to be before I start cutting the shaft. Uh, I also need to disconnect it from the uh, hanger off of the dash. Do that now. Okay, that should take care of that. And there we go. You can see here, uh, it's actually a rivet. And then there's a corresponding one on the bottom side also. So I'm going to grind and drill those out. And then this collar and plate should slide freely along this tube. Then I can slide the tube down to the desired length that I want it. And then we'll have to address the bottom here where it slides into the steering box.
So it's the next day and it's a hot sunny day. So as I uncovered the car, I said, let's make a temporary shade relief tent. So that's what I did. It's the real deal out here, people. Working out in my driveway in the backyard, doing what I need to do to get the car done. I'm on a mission. Uh, today's mission, however, is the brake pedals, clutch pedal, and gas pedal. I'll uh, bring you in closer and go over what we're going to do. So I have a pedal assembly that I got from a 38 Plymouth. I'm going to use this area of it, probably slice it around there, and graft it into a 48 GMC truck brake assembly that I put in the car. Let's take a look at that. And being that I have the tow board situated with the steering column now, which I ended up doing about a one, one and a half inch drop. Uh, you can see here I have a guide for the pedals from when it was in the 24 Dodge originally. So I'm going to use those for a reference point. This way I can keep them on each side of the steering column. So if we go under the car, I'll show you what I started doing. Oh, there's Maybelline. Okay, so this assembly here I took out from a 48 GMC truck. Uh, fits in between the frame rail nice. The, I have a new master cylinder that will mount here. This one here is for the brakes. And then I got the clutch rod up there. And then I have to get it to connect to the clutch fork right here for the transmission. So what I have to do, take a better look here. So you can see the tow boards. Let me get a better angle. Oh, that's not any better. Okay, so here we are on the underside. You can see that slot there and there for the clutch pedal, brake pedal, and the steering shaft there. So I'm going to have to heat and reshape the pedals or the arms. About this, for the brake one, we got to do about three and a quarter inches to get on the other side of that steering shaft. So I'm going to heat it up with the torch and bend it, reshape it, and see what we can get from there. So I want to make sure I clear this clutch fork so when I heat it and shape it over this way, it doesn't interfere with that. Go about there. Okay, so we got the first bend. We'll let that cool. Then I'll do the second bend to complete the offset. Making sure I keep that parallel with that one. So there's our first bend. And once that cools down, we'll heat it again and put another bend there to straighten this out. 
then that will give us our three and a quarter inch offset. So I just got done with the second bend for the brake pedal. It's about a three inch offset. We'll let that cool down and then we'll start fitting the upper portion of the pedal. So I got the upper portion of the pedal from the 38 Plymouth uh, cut and fitted in position where I like it. Now I'll go on the back side and I'll take that bracket that you saw me heat and bend earlier and position this to where it mounts up to that bracket. So I'm going to go on the other side, tack weld it, and then nut and bolt it, and then that should take care of the brake pedal. Here's the back side that I was just talking about where I tack welded it. Uh, right there onto the lever that goes down to the 48 GMC uh, brake master cylinder. So I'll take that out, fully weld it, bolt it back in, and then start working on the clutch. Here's the finished brake pedal after some welding and grinding and shaping. You can see the offset that it has now to clear everything underneath the car. It's got the arch so as it travels it pivots properly. So now onto the clutch pedal. So as I talked about earlier with the pitman arm and the drag link and the steering issue, uh, what I was thinking of doing is taking this pitman arm and flipping it. So now we have the ball of it facing outward, which will put us in a better position of clearing this leaf spring and giving us a straighter angle with the drag link. However, as you can see, two issues. It's a little short and the socket that retains the ball is facing outward. We need that to turn 180 to face the ball. So what I'm going to do is slice this off, extend it and rotate it 180 and weld it back into position. To do that, I got some nice heavy walled steel tubing that has the inside diameter to match this drag link shaft. So when I slice it, I'll cut a piece of this, drill holes to plug weld as I put this back into here to extend this. So with the plug welds and a, a, a bead of weld around the edge, we'll have a nice strong um, extended drag link that will get the job done. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll get a measurement, cut our pipe, sleeve it, weld it, reinstall it, and go from there. And then we should have a working steering system in the car.
So now that we have that cut, I measured it was about, we needed two inches of extension on that draggling to meet up to the pitman arm. So I want to keep a couple inches of the original draggling piping inside my sleeve for structural integrity. So overall, I'm going to cut this pipe six inches, which will give us plenty of of the original drag link inside to plug weld it to for a nice strong joint. So we'll go ahead and get this on the cut on the chop saw, get some holes drilled that we'll use to plug weld for a nice secure bond. And well, we'll get it measured up first, get it mocked up and then we'll get that back in. It's not too bad of a dilemma to deal with. So, Let's get this marked out and we'll get a cut. So now that we got the drag link cut apart, we totally have no steering right now, but we're going to fix that. So I want to, this needs to be extended about two inches as you saw me measure earlier. So if we have two inches on that end, two inches on this end, and we need to be extended two inches, I need a piece of pipe that's going to be six inches long. So I'll take this to the chop saw. We'll cut that at the six inch mark and then we'll get it drilled for plug welding. We'll fit everything together for a trial fit. We'll get this rotated 180. We all like what we see. We'll get it welded up and we'll be back to having a steering system in this old hot rod. So let's get to the chop saw. So we got our piece cut, on to the next step. Got the sleeve cut and drilled for welding. Got both pieces cleaned up. We'll get this fitted on here and get, a, get our measurement. And then once we like it, we're gonna weld it. So this is a nice tight pressed fit. Get this half installed, making sure we're facing the right direction. Get that bolt tightened up, then we'll check the steering and see if it works. All right, let's get up to that steering wheel and give it a turn and see what happens. Looks like we got steering. Smooth travel from lock to lock, no binding. Feels good. We're gonna go with that. So, looks like our measurements were dead on. We got everything fitted nicely. 
Now I'll go ahead and get that welded solid. And then at that point, we have a full working steering system in the hot rod. Uh, we'll keep moving forward with this project. Uh, you may have noticed the engine is currently out. Uh, in, the, in the interim there, I had discovered the transmission was acting a little funny with shifting and spinning. So I pulled it out with the engine to inspect it. So next we'll take apart the LaSalle transmission and check out the internals. I think there might be an issue in there. So, uh, so before we go ahead and do the clutch pedal, I want to make sure that trans is the one we're going to use. So on to the transmission next. <laughs> Well, here we have the LaSalle transmission all apart and with those chipped teeth on the first and reverse gear cluster, that's what I felt with the binding of the spinning and the shifting. So we're going to have to get some replacement gears. However, they're not easily uh, obtainable. So while I'm hunting down those parts, I'm not going to stop this project. I happen to have a 37 Packard transmission that's just as durable and cool. So we're going to be putting that into the hot rod. So that'll probably be our next segment. So be sure to check back in for that one. Mm -hmm. 